Dearest Diana, here it is Tuesday night, and I'm writing as I promised. I'm here at your Aunt Josephine's. It was so kind of her to let me stay here while I take the Queen's examinations. We begin first thing in the morning. Everyone was frightfully nervous today, and the moods varied with the individuals. My hands are cold as ice. Feel my hands, Josie. I think I'm going to fail algebra. I really think I am. Charlie, you have to be more positive. Okay, I will fail algebra. I know I will. <laughs> I've been studying with Anne. She knows everything. I'm sure she'll do well. Even if she does pass, I don't think she can handle the grind of studying to become a teacher. Anyway, Gilbert will do better. Jimmy Glover bet Ned Wright a whole dollar that Anne would score higher than Gilbert. The Bible says we shouldn't bet. And where does it say that? Well, time six is 72. Pop Moody Spurgeon McPherson, what are you doing? I'm saying my multiplication tables. He's been saying them for three hours. It steadies my nerves and makes me calm. Now, don't interrupt. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hello, everybody. I'll be around the your rooms early in the morning, so I suggest you all get a good night's sleep. Now, I know you should study all you can, but I recommend you not create tonight. Just relax and clear your heads. Let's begin by going to town for ice cream all around. I treat, of course. I'm very proud of you all, and I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Come on, let's be going. Oh, Diana, if only the geometry examination were over. But as Mrs. Lynde would say, the sun will go on rising and setting whether I fail in geometry or not. But I think I'd rather it didn't go on if I failed. I wish so much that you were here with me. Yours devotedly, Anne. Diana, come up with the dishes. I can't wash themselves now. Coming, Mother. or not. I have this creepy, crawly feeling I didn't. But I'd rather not pass at all if I don't come out ahead of a certain someone. Marilla! Seems I've been gone much longer than three days. More like three years. How'd you do? Well, she thinks she failed, but I don't believe a word of it. Well, if she did, it means she wouldn't be going away next year. When will you know? The past list will be in the Charlottetown <coughs> paper today, but we won't get it till tomorrow. Right now, though, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to enjoy seeing you and Matthew. Marilla, what's wrong? It's probably one of her headaches again. No, no, it's not that. I, I just missed you, that's all. And I'm glad to see you. And I fear you'll be gone next year. If I pass. And I'll come home every weekend. We'll even have passenger train service in by then. You've grown so tall and stylish. You're even quieter now. I just wish you could have stayed the way you were, even with all your funny little ways. But you've changed. Not really. You just branched out a bit, all. So. No matter where I go, how much I change outwardly, I will always be your little Anne who will love you and Matthew, Green Gables, more and better every day of my life. Now you got me all mushy and silly acting. But go put on your everyday clothes and help me feed the chickens. I love nothing better. Here's the pass list. 
You and Gilbert tied for first, oh. and everyone from Avonlea passed. And Miss Stacy will be so delighted. Moody Spurgeon got a conditional in history, and Josie Pye just barely <laughs> scraped by. But everyone passed, and your name is at the top of the list. Matthew, Marilla, I, I passed, and I'm first, or one of the first anyway. I'm not being vain. I'm just very, very thankful. Well, now, I knew you could beat them all. You've done pretty well, I must say. Oh, Anne, I got your letter. It was so exciting. You must tell me all about the trip. Yes, just as soon as I help Marilla feed the chickens. Oh, Matthew can help me feed the chickens. You girls do your visiting and catch up on everything. Thank you. Diana, you can come with me to my room while I unpack. I wouldn't have believed the English examination. Well, looks like you did a fairly good job with her after all, Marilla. Oh, go on. Me put my oar it didn't hurt too much, I suppose. She's a smart thing. Pretty and loving, too. She is that. She's been a blessing to us, that's sure. There never was a luckier mistake than what Mrs. Spencer made. If it was luck, I think it was providence, because the Almighty saw we needed her, I reckon. Matthew Cuthbert, are you going to stand here gabbing all day, or are you going to help me beat the chickens? I was feeding the cows. You're always feeding the cows. They're going to get as fat as, as Rachel Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Josie, please hurry. It won't be daylight much longer. Fine, well, Charlotte Town's much more exciting after dark anyway. Why is she getting so fancied up? She wants to see her French professor in town. And why not? He's simply a duck. I prefer him in my own age. Like Gilbert Blythe. I see him carrying your books, Ruby. Josie, are you ready? <coughs> Just need some help with this necklace. Is Anne coming? No, she's studying as usual. She's determined to get her first class teacher's license in one year instead of two. I wouldn't dream of finishing one year. I can't wait to get back to the academy. Anyway, my father can afford it. You know, when Anne decided to try and finish in one year, Gilbert decided he would too. I wonder why. <coughs> Hello, everyone. You better get to town while it's still daylight. Or you'll have to be escorted. We're being detained by Josie's story. I see. Come with us, Anne. You can't study all weekend. Anyway, everybody knows Emily Clare and Lewis Williams will win the gold medal. Or Gilbert Blythe. Or Anne Shirley. In fact, I'll bet Anne can win the Avery Scholarship if Queens were awarded one. Ready. At last. You're sure you won't come, Anne? Thank you, but Miss Josephine Barry is picking me up in a few minutes. I'm spending the night with her. How nice. Remember how we used to all go home every weekend before Christmas? We were so homesick then. And we didn't have so much homework to do. Oh, look. There's Gilbert on the front porch. He can walk us into town. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye. Have a nice time at Miss Ferris. Thank you, I will. We were so homesick then. Well, some of us still are. Oh, I wish I could go home. Marilla's probably making tea for Matthew and the hired hand about now. They'll talk of the chickens, the cows, the crops. Will they talk of me? Do they miss me as much as I miss them? Andrew? Miss Josephine, would you be terribly offended if I called you Aunt Josephine? I'd be terribly offended if you didn't. Thank you for inviting me. Will you be staying the whole weekend? Thank you, but final exams are just around the corner, and I have to do well so I can graduate and get my teacher's license. Well, we can make the most out of one night. I had my cook make a fancy raw turkey with all the trimmings. Now, how does that sound? Simply wonderful. Come now, the driver's waiting. By the way, did I see that blind boy on the porch? I think so. A nice young man. A good match for you, I think. Oh, I'm not so sure. I am. 
He's attractive, seems studious, ambitious, and possesses an even more important feature. What's that, Aunt Josephine? A strong chin. It's true, a strong chin is a man's most important attribute. See, I was a good students I ever had. I only wish I could go on to college. <laughs> Who can handle sending their child to college? We just about as much as we can afford. Mr. Pye's father could. By now she'll graduate from Queens. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the teaching position in Avonlea is available again. Yes, and go back by the primary headmaster. We have a Mr. Phillips. Why should we call you with a map? <laughs> Come on then, I'll be up with a date. Please look at that Moody Spurgeon McPherson. First in line for the cookies. <laughs> 